And I never thought I'd be saying something is healthy when Alex says it's toxic. Today, I'm gonna to be reviewing one of Alex's videos and he did the favor recently for me and reviewed one of mine. Surprisingly, very complimentary. Him and I have sparred in the past, you know it brother, we've had our back and forth, so we disagreed on a lot, but there was some brain stuff that we really agreed on. So he left a great review of one of my videos. I thought I'd return the favor. I asked you guys in the community section, which one do you want me to review? There was actually two, but this one got just the most votes. So we're gonna be reviewing five things men want more from sex. Now, I'm not gonna pull punches here. I'm gonna give my honest feedback on it. There's some parts I really like, I think are really good in this video. Then there's some parts that I feel are a little under-researched and could be improved. And then I'll give a comment on sort of Alex's overall approach, what you're gonna get when you watch Alex, what you're gonna get when you watch me, and highlight some of the differences so you guys can be aware of what you're looking at. Don't forget, my book is now available as well, so you can grab that link in the description on audiobook as well and there's a bunch of free downloads text to make him yours male dating personalities even the first chapter of my book you can get for free in the description so have a look at all of that let's watch the video overall actually before we do that i wanted to comment overall one thing i really like about alex his branding the guy's a master brander he's polarizing so he recently renamed his channel to The Toxic Dating Coach, which I think is way better and is gonna get him way more traction. Um, you can see people love his videos, they're comment heavy, 217 comments on a 20K watch is phenomenal. And overall, like look at this, I think, um, whereas I think I put the comments here, but usually, maybe it's not on this video, usually you can go underneath and there's a bunch of merch that he sells as well. So he's got merch, he's got seminars coming up, he does one-on-one. -on -one. I don't know how the dude gets the time. So he's, he's running an operation here. But overall, I, I love his branding. He's funny, he's good to watch. So there's some great things that I think, frankly, I could take away from him. Um, and overall, I really like the second half of the video, especially there's some great points in it. Let's watch the first half though. I do have a few critiques, so we shall get into it. Five things men want more than sex. This one, I don't care how good that poom poom is. This is what men want above any poom poom on the planet. That's a really great way to start a video because what he's done is he's pulled the best few seconds of the video and put it right at the start. Immediately engages the viewer. I need to be doing that. All right, ladies. All right, ladies. This, this is Alex. You're toxic. It's not the same. It's not the same people. I lost my toxic back in Mexico. <laughs> this is Alex. You're the great dating coach and um today we're going to talk about seven five things that men want more than sex now mind you this video was inspired by my homie matthew coast he made a video about seven things seven what men want more than sex and i was like you know what what do i want more than sex okay <laughs> what do i want more than sex it cannot be anything bad at all right no all i want is happiness <laughs> I will never, ever, ever abuse my power, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I actually like this. He puts little interesting things like this into his videos, which is, it, it gives him real personality. It makes him unique. It's, it's cool. <laughs> All right, let's begin. And look, man, um, by the way, we're having a seminar in New York City next month. Um, Click on the description down below to attend. Um, it's going to be a, um, it's going to be fifty dollars to attend. Um, but the day before the seminar, we're going to have a free, a free um, meetup. So you guys could meet Father Alex, and I could put my hands on your head and bless you, because Father Alex could bless you. Lord said, "Lay thy hands on my people and bless them with thy name." That's right, people. So yeah, we have that. Is this what the coaches are doing at their seminar? Blessing them? Does the pussy do this? It's kind of cool, isn't it? It's good. It's, it gives him a real character. I, I do really like that, even though it's, I couldn't do it, but it's cool. Yeah. Um, okay, let's begin. Look, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you to the fellow Patreon supporter who asked this question. Well, I'm lying to you, okay? I found out myself. Okay, I lied, all right? Um, the first one is this, man. Well, man, let's first get this out the way. The first thing that men want, understand when you're a child, your, your, your body has a lot of dopamine. 
That's why you enjoy a lot. That's why you get excited a lot. Your body is just experiencing new things. Yeah, so what he's talking about here is dopamine is being released to reward you for new experiences and for trying new things. There is literally a pleasure hormone attached and evolutionarily that helps us explore that as kids. I mean, I used to be a vet and it was always fascinated me. You'd see a puppy that would explore. It was looking all around the room. It was always inquisitive, no fear. You'd see a three-year-old dog, terrified. German Shepherds were a classic example. Puppies, so curious, so explorative, adults terrified. So even, you see this even in animals, they have these circuits that really reward them for being riskier and more exploratory early in their lives. And dopamine is one of the key chemicals, so that's what Alex is talking about there. And releasing dopamine everywhere, you're, you're in shock by the world. So the first thing that needs to get out is the dopaminergic desire, and that is sex, which we know that's not what he... We sex is definitely one dopamine release thing. This is not the topic of this video, but then the next thing after sex is power. In fact, you can say power is above sex, to be honest with you. The men want power and respect. Now, this is one of the most unhealthiest desires to have, because when you want... That's not necessarily true. I'll explain why in a moment. Uh, when you want power, you're willing to break the rules. You're willing to abuse people. You're willing to become narcissistic. So this is the dark side of... Narcissism isn't something you're willing to become. Narcissism is a cover for a wound. And yes, it does result in a lust for power. But I don't... It's not a case that someone says, Do you know what? I need power. I'm willing to become narcissistic. It's a case of the, the narcissism and the wounding and the lack of power in other areas of their lives gives them a lust for power in certain areas. And the narcissism almost acts like a band-aid over that so that they don't have to worry about others and they can get that power. What men want outside of sex. Because you, you could just want sex and hit, on, hit up an escort, right? Go, go down to Mexico City, download, seek an arrangement, hit up your... Is that why you lost your whip, Alex? a personal assistant to message them for you give them a price have your personal assistant give you their their number then you message them it's not like i do that <laughs> father alex we heard what you said you're going to hell shut up melissa okay stop judging me <laughs> that's great so yeah men want power and respect and in term and that's why a lot of dictators that's why people that's why they are dictators you have to understand the human animal is, has a genetic code inside of them that that natural selection selected the ones that wanted more simply because it pro it, it promoted your genes. Just think about it. Which animal do you think will have more success? The animal that gets satisfied as soon as it gets what it wants, or the human animal that gets something and it wants more and it wants more and it wants more. The one that will succeed in passing on your genes more is the is a psychotic one so that gene the humans that were just happy with the little things they got most likely they got killed off by the dictator and his gene got passed on the most so it's inside of every single human to want to control to want to dominate particularly men because the more dominant you are the more sex you have for the most part and in, in, in apes the, the the alpha male is the male that fought the most that beat the so this is all true. This is all good. The most, and that intimidates his um his his competitors the most. So by you having an intimidating aura, which which is what power gives you, it gives you more ability to get resources. It gives you the ability to manipulate this, to manipulate that, because power and money is an emotional quality, and you're able to control people through that. So that's the number one thing that men want outside of money, outside of sex, is power. And which can mean pop, which can mean pop, blah, 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 which can mean money, military, whatever the fuck you call it, three girlfriends, five girl, I don't care. Whatever that guy interprets as, as power. Another thing is that what a guy wants is, like I said, it's it's based on where he is in life. So this is the this is the first phase of what guys usually do, right? Like like in Mark's video, which he showed, which is pretty brilliant to be honest with you. He talked about how yeah, as I say, he did a nice review of my video, so I'll leave the link in the description. How children have hierarchies, even when they're childs, right? They have hierarchies. You know who's the loser, you know who's cool. That's before they even develop their sex hormones, in terms of like when they, when, when they want to fuck, right? That's before that. 
So just that shows you the origins of humans before even wanting sex. They just want power. They want to be on top, right? So that's the first one. Um, the okay, so a lot of that is really good and really true. When Alex says, he said something earlier, he said, the lust for power and respect is one of the most unhealthy traits. And I never thought I'd be saying something is healthy when Alex says it's toxic, but the lust for power or the want of power, the want for control, the want for respect, he, he sort of corrected this a little bit later. That is very healthy. Every human wants power. Every human wants respect. Every human wants control. We all want these things. You, you tell me you don't want those things. Of course you do. You want the power and control to know that your boyfriend's not going to walk out and cheat on you. Uh, you want to have power over your bank account so someone can't just reach in there and take your money. You want dominion and power over your physical house fences so that the neighbors aren't having a party or worse, someone's a homeless person's camped out in your lawn. So the, the want of power, we often shame it, but it, it's not a unhealthy trait. What can become unhealthy, which is what Alex is referring to, is that when it gets to extremes, then people will be willing to step over others' boundaries to get that power. And that's very true. And as Alex says, to some extent, this is really coded into men because it gets them more sex and allows them to procreate more. And you've got to look at the way a guy meets his needs. I talk about this in my book, is does a guy meet his needs in psychologically healthy ways? Or does he not? Because inevitably, especially in a capitalistic society, the people who have the most lust for power are going to rise to the top, frankly, because a lot of other people just can't be bothered. Because to become the most powerful, you need to give up a lot of other stuff and you usually need to overstep and walk on boundaries and do a lot of things that people who don't have the same lust for power aren't necessarily willing to do. But why do some men do that more than others? Everyone has this to an extent when they're young. But as men get older, these, you, you start to realize that, hey, I can live to my values and I have to choose the way I meet my needs. Some people take control of this and take dominion over it and others don't. And those that don't are typically those that are the most wounded because they felt so powerless at some point that some degree of narcissism or some degree of personality disorder has come over the top to just give them an infinite lust for power. And that, I think, is what Alex is talking about. When it gets to that extent, someone is willing to step over anyone, including you, to get that power. And these are the people you've got to be really careful with because they will meet the, their needs by any means necessary, not by the ways that align with their values. And if you're wanting to do a relationship, if you're wanting someone who is going to meet their needs in healthy ways, you want to be able to spot the people who are meeting their needs in unhealthy ways, such as, say, stepping over boundaries, including yours, such as doing things that don't align with their or your values. So you do want to be listening. It, it's not wrong that a guy wants power. It's not wrong that human beings want power, the same way it's not wrong that human beings want attention, validation, control. Um, even me, if I plan an anniversary dinner for my girlfriend, that gives me some power and control over her. Right? Because ultimately, if I don't do that, if I never do nice things for her, eventually she's going to want to leave me. Right? But that's not an unhealthy way to get power. If I'm doing it to control her in the sense that I'm making her do something, I'm puppet mastering her, that's going to be different. But we all do things every single day because we want others to like us, because we want to have some dominion over our relationships and our life. The question you've got to ask yourself is, are the other people that you're doing it to being overstepped or are they happy participants? And if my girlfriend is happy to receive an anniversary dinner, then that's a nice way for me to have some control and some influence over the way she feels about me. The second thing outside of this. All right, so of the five, this is the one I disagree with. This is when a man begins to mature, which hopefully Father Alex will maybe one day become this individual. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, this is kind of scary. I'm not gonna lie, that was a scary look. The second thing is um, they want to feel chemistry. This is the most powerful one. Now, outside of sex, outside of one in power. This is the most powerful one for boys. But I'll explain what I mean by that. It's important we get into what dopamine is and how it contributes to chemistry to really understand this. This is the most powerful one. A guy will give up 
A, a, a model-looking chick for a 300-pound gorilla if, she, if he has chemistry with her. <laughs> wait, wait, that sounds wrong. A guy will give up a girl who's like a 10 for a girl who's an 8, like just to give you an example, if, she, if he has great chemistry with her. Chemistry will allow you to, to look over how the person looks. As long as this person is, is functional, right, you will look over that. If a guy has chemistry with you, he might cheat on you. <laughs> <laughs> he might cheat on you, but he'll never leave you, <laughs> right? Because some, look, unfortunately, some guys love you even if they cheat on you. Like one of the biggest reasons why guys why guys go to um, prostitutes is for blowjobs. It's not that they don't love their girl, but that but that the girl that he's they're with doesn't want to give a blowjob. I'm not even kidding with you. Like it, it, they even even prostitutes. That's true in terms of men do do that to say this, and and it's kind of like I kind of understand like. It's kind of like, judge me if you guys want to, right? But let's just put it this way. If I have a girl, and this is why I don't have a girlfriend, right? So it could be an explanation. But if I have a girl, and she I mean, that's something to consider as well. Obviously, there's gonna be a lot of people who know relationships well, who are single at the time. Um, I've certainly been single in my time doing this. But you do wanna listen, especially if you're wanting to build relationship, to the relationship history of the coaches you listen to. It's one reason I'm a big fan of Matt Boggs. He really promotes that and you can see he does relationship well. So something to keep in the back of your mind as you listen to different coaches. She doesn't like to suck dick, right? Or or she or she finds it a chore and she loves me and so she does it. I don't want her to do it because she feels it's a chore. I would never ever put her in that position, girls. No. I would just take a flight. I I just take a flight to Mexico. Girl, I'm go. I'll be back. Nah, I'm just kidding with you. But the point is, is that guys go to escorts because they want to do it. Escorts are some of them are just you know they just like doing it. To be honest with you, I'm not even kidding. I mean, I don't know. But um, it, it's just that the way I see it is that I don't want to force you to do it, you know. But that's why I'm not I'm not in a relationship. So who knows, right? So yeah, that's. I mean, I think this also highlights a little bit some of Alex's not yet maturities or immaturities in in relationship because. What he basically described there, it first of all, it does actually make a lot of sense. And he's saying, look, I don't want someone to do things out of obligation. And that's 100% spot on, is you, you don't want that. But he, he speaks a truth in that a lot of men would rather lie in this instance. And this it's really a testament to how fucking scared men are of hurting women's feelings and even of losing relationship is that a lot of them, rather than speaking up for their own needs and what they want, and maybe how not having blowjobs actually makes them feel, uh, instead of doing that and being uncomfortable and potentially building the relationship, or maybe even ending it so you can both be with other people, a lot of people take the easy route. And frankly, a lot of people do have Alex's mindset in this case, which is, oh, like rather than addressing how this makes me feel or why this is important to me and then having a negotiation over it, maybe she you know, had trauma with giving a guy blowjobs in the past. Maybe it's something that she deep down does want to learn back to do, but it's something that, that she's scared of and she has some trauma to work through around that. That could really bond the couple. It's uncomfortable, those conversations suck and they're really unpleasant, but it could really bond the couple as opposed to what a lot of people do is kind of this mentality he shared here, which is like, ah, oh, that's too difficult. I don't want to hurt her feeling because she's a princess, but I don't want to leave her either. So I'll go meet this, this need elsewhere. And when I say that, I don't mean the blowjobs themselves are a need, but as I showed in a video recently, what men get out of blowjobs, a lot of them, it meets their need for respect. One of the number one things a man feels respected when he receives a blowjob, which goes back to the point Alex said earlier. So there are needs here. It does affect men emotionally. A lot of men, if they're being honest, when they're not getting blowjobs, and this is just an example, but sex would be another one. Men are so used to not speaking up on their needs and stuff like this and protecting your feelings. And maybe they did speak up once in the past, but a girl went ham on them and went emotional. And so they said, I don't want to be a bad guy. I'm never going to say that again. And the men have been trained in dishonesty. So they go to the escort to Mexico instead. So it's such a big, I think it's a big statement about the relationship maturity you want to attract, which mindset you take on with your own needs and also how you train your man to speak up on his own. So have a listen for this when you're dating, when you're meeting men. Let's continue. That's one thing, I went off the topic. Chemistry, chemistry 
Every person wants chemistry because chemistry is what a lot is is the is is. I believe I haven't looked into it, but chemistry, I guess, is what oxytocin feels like at its highest. I don't know. I'll be honest with you. Don't quote me on that, but that's my theory. So he's sort of right there. Chemistry is a little more dopamine driven than oxytocin, but it's it's a really a combination of both. I'll explain where I got that from in a second. Be on it. And, chem and and oxytocin is a is a is a is the feeling that social animals have to have in order to cooperate and to be with people. And that is actually a deep and intense genetic desire that every human has, the desire to connect. So yeah, so oxytocin is the cuddle drug. It's released when you cuddle, it's most released with skin to skin contact, it's released when a baby is suckling or on your chest. Think of it very much as a drug of connection, cuddling, warmth, feeling very good. Outside, well, outside of wanting sex, and empower, I think it's equal with the desire to connect. The problem is that dopamine, when your dopamine is high, it suppresses your oxytocin. When your oxytocin is high, it suppresses your dopamine. Okay, so I don't know if he meant to say serotonin here, but I couldn't find any evidence at all for what he just said, which is, he said, when your oxytocin is high, it suppresses dopamine and vice versa. I know he says here that there's a certain book that he read, in just a moment but uh, I wanted to fact check myself here so looking this up let's see if I can click the right tab here uh, no that was not the right tab so I read through a couple of these are long ass studies look at this it went on forever this was one on oxytocin motivation and the role of dopamine uh, and it spoke about here look there, there's a lot going on here but Oxytocin and dopamine do not act alone, but rather appear to interact with one another in the formation of pair bonds. Uh, this one, integral parts where dopamine and oxytocin do it together basically to mediate the effects. This uh, one was on dopamine and oxytocin interactions. Basically, I read through most of this, it was a lot. But basically, I think Alex meant serotonin there because most of the studies I read found oxytocin and dopamine to be more or less linked. This was actually quite interesting. This one at the bottom shows that different, different disorders, social dysfunction, autism, drug addiction, have various different changes. You can see that they're not opposites, though they're, they're very much interactive or in, they're very much intertwined. So again, oxytocin is your cuddle hormone released for connection. Dopamine is your pleasure reward hormone. So dopamine is released in response to pleasure and in response to anticipating pleasure. So dopamine is when you have sex. Dopamine is when you anticipate going to the football. Dopamine is when you scroll on Facebook and get a little ping every time or pull the lever on a poker machine. Dopamine is when you watch porn. Dopamine is very much, where is it here? Dopamine is basically your pleasure reward. And serotonin, which I think is maybe what Alex meant to talk about here, is your mood modulator. So when dopamine is high, you're anticipating pleasure. When serotonin is low, your mood will not be modulated as well. And that's why serotonin drugs that keep serotonin levels high are often used to treat depression. So you kind of want high serotonin, you can have fun with high dopamine, and you want high oxytocin. And your testosterone. Look into it. There's a book called The Molecule of More that talks about that. So you cannot... Be so again, full transparency. I haven't read that book. I don't know the relationship with testosterone, but I couldn't find any evidence for dopamine and oxytocin being opposites. Even in a desire to connect while you're in a desire to get dopamine. Why? Because dopamine is about the future. Dopamine is about the extra personal, what's outside of your reach. Oxytocin is about what's in front of you. What do you touch? Your loved one, cuddling with your girl and stuff like that. Dopamine is about getting something. Oxytocin is about appreciating what's in front of you. So let's just say you're, you, you really wanna go to a basketball game and you cannot wait to get there. That's your dopamine. You can't, I cannot wait, I cannot wait. I wanna get there, I wanna get there, I wanna get there. So because you wanna get there, you, don't, you can't even appreciate the sounds of those evil birds, the smell of the flowers. Yes, I really like this. Dopamine is very distracting. And that's very important. I'm going to talk about why in just a moment. Dopamine, because it's future-focused anticipation of pleasure, it really 
it gives you those, what's it called? Covered glasses where you can't look at anything else. The, the, the yelling of the homeless person, you cannot appreciate what's in front of you because you're so focused on getting there. So as you see, both things cannot function at the same time. So as soon as a guy gets over that dopamine phase of wanting fun all the time, or as soon as those, as soon as those um, neurochemicals um, um, become exhausted, because they definitely do become exhausted, that's why celebrities take a lot of drugs, because they have act Yeah, they especially become exhausted if you do something that's very dopamine stimulating. And this is actually a brain scan. This is interesting. This is a brain scan here of a normal brain versus a meth abuser and you can see the the dopamine receptors so red indicates the presence of dopamine receptors so basically with dopamine the more you get it the less rewarding it becomes everything with dopamine has diminishing returns and this is why sometimes dopamine can be inversely related to serotonin which is the more dopamine you have or the more you spike your dopamine up here the less serotonin you have and remember serotonin modulates mood so you're spiking your dopamine you're spiking your dopamine serotonin goes down and because dopamine a lot of things that have dopamine have diminishing returns like watching porn right going to uh, or even doing drugs is probably a better example doing drugs doing drugs. Another example would be uh, random sex, scrolling Facebook. Another example would be another new wild experience. Now, the more you do these things, the less rewarding they become. As in, the first time you watch porn, it's really fun. The second time, by like the thousandth time, you're just depressed, right? It's so depressing. All of these things that release dopamine, the more you do them, eventually you get more and more depressed because you have less and less serotonin and the dopamine receptors work less and less. You're trying to kick it up and it goes like this. Meanwhile, your serotonin's doing this. And this is why dopamine is gonna be something, I'm gonna talk about this in a second again, but dopamine and the lust for it leads to a lot of depression and a lot of problems. And this is important because you want to be aware of a guy's relationship with dopamine by scanning for one very important thing, which is impulsiveness. I'm not talking about spontaneity, I'm talking about impulsiveness. As Alex talked about, dopamine is incredibly distracting. When you're on a dopamine fix, it's very hard to look at anything else. And a lot of these things, even alcohol, Right? A lot of these things that we do impulsively are things that we know intuitively are not good for us long term. We know that intuitively, but we do them anyway. Why do we do that? Because they are distracting. And so ultimately, impulsiveness, doing things like this, is a great way to distract from problems. So dopamine becomes your number one distractor from problems, and you can see it through impulsive behavior. Let's get back to Alex's video for a bit. Access to all the pleasures, oxytocin will go up. You begin to maybe get into religion to a pre or even meditation, which is appreciating what's in front of you, oxytocin. Maybe you'll want to settle down with a girl, right? And you don't even care the way she looks. That's why you see a lot of good looking celebrity guys with subpar women, right? I mean, I'm sorry, I hate to say that, right? So that's it. Well, subpar, when I mean subpar, I mean compared to the exes because they usually just date models. But when they settle down. I mean, this is kind of a classic mentality of, I want to say the more Kevin Samuels mindset, maybe the Alex mindset, is, is it's all ratings is based on biology. So your supermodels are your 10s out of 10s, your next down are your models, which are 9s out of 10s, and everyone else is quote unquote subpar. And biologically, that makes sense. But again, Going after that is it's just an image. It's like the Instagram model that I work with who she looks like that, she's got millions and millions of followers, but behind the scenes, all she wants is someone to love her without makeup on. And being with someone like that, how many followers do these women get, right? They get millions and millions by being perfect. And guys, 
follow those Instagram accounts because they ping dopamine, 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 and they want to be with a woman like that. And they imagine themselves being with a woman like that, that they see on Instagram and they get all this dopamine. And this is why these women have so many followers. And this is why men look up to these women and they're like, oh my God, a supermodel. Imagine dating a supermodel. And it's so dopamine driven, right? That that's all they can focus on. But as I say, it's not real and dopamine inevitably has diminishing returns. Even if you do date someone like that, they don't stay like that forever. And we see lots of happy relationships that are between people in their 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. So clearly it's not looks and dopamine that is driving happiness. And this is so, so important to get because if you're going after dopamine fixes, and frankly, that's I think a lot of what Alex coaches, you're going to essentially end up depressed because of dopamine, the way it works, and because it's not real in the end. That's exactly why the guys he's talking about, I mean, you, you, you do see it all the time. You, you see celebrities settle down with more real people because they realize that ultimately there's a lot more fulfillment in being with those people because dopamine is not fulfilling long term. You can get with the model, but ultimately you end up feeling empty, which goes back to this graph which is, oh my God, I'm ultimately depressed because I'm whatever dating models is the next thing we can put on here, right? But ultimately all of this stuff has diminishing returns. Down they date average women, right? Um, it's kind of like average women are like the simps of the world because a woman will bang at all the Chad's and Tyrone, but as soon as she wants to settle down, she'll find Bob, right? It's almost like the same thing, to be honest with you. Um, by the way, I saw myself high yesterday making a video and I was like, yo, I have a lot of facial expressions. I was Googling, anybody can answer, why do some people have more facial expressions than others? Because when I was watching myself on YouTube smoking weed, I was like, yo, this motherfucker is weird. <laughs> He's a weird cat, bro. Okay, so overall, this comment about chemistry, you wanna be watching for men that need that chemistry. Because that chemistry, whatever the behavior is that gets them the dopamine, it's ultimately reflecting impulsiveness. And as Alex described, as I mentioned before, impulsiveness is one of the best distractors, but it's also one of the biggest relationship ruiners, right? If I'm impulsive, why would I stay with my girlfriend? I'm just gonna follow whatever dopamine drive I need next. Now, here's the other thing about dopamine is, if you've, they've done this with rats, which is if you give a rat a reward, every time it goes to its drink bottle, it's cool, it's chill. It doesn't need to stress, the reward is there. If you never give a rat a reward when it goes to its drink bottle, it doesn't even bother. What's the point? But if you give a rat a reward inconsistently when it goes to its drink bottle, like the second time, the seventh time, the eighth time, the 23rd time, the 25th time, the 53rd time, that rat will go crazy. Get in the drink bottle. Because it, it doesn't know when its next reward it will come. And so a lot of us, a lot of us have experienced this with our emotional needs as kids. And that's why certain people can be so dopamine driving and so addictive. Secure attachment individuals can sometimes be a bit calm. They're a little boring. The chemistry is like a seven out of 10 rather than a 10. And those are the people that form the best relationships. If dopamine is a 10, it's more likely a sign that that person is triggering some sort of inconsistent emotional need from your childhood than it is that they're actually a good partner. It's really, really hard to build any kind of relationship with someone who is a chemistry level 10. And this is one of the big differences when you're looking for a guy for relationship, if that's what you want, look for impulsiveness or lack of it. Because if he still has wounds to work through, if his mum was inconsistent with how she provided for him, then he may have an addiction to women who are inconsistent when they provide for him. And that can be a problem because then he leaves you for her. So it depends on the level of addiction. And this is just as true for women as well. I work with women all the time who are completely addicted to the toxic guy. And even though they know that there are certain other guys that are gonna be much more aligned with their relationship goals, they keep going back to the narcissist or the toxic guy because it's just like those little rats. They're like, oh, I can, I can get my dopamine fix here. 
So bottom line, for both men and women, being able to wean yourself off dopamine and being able to reduce your impulsiveness so that chemistry is not your prime driver and that you don't ultimately end up depressed is one of the biggest things you want to be looking for and listening for if you're looking to build relationship. Guys like Alex may even coach you in the mentality that, oh, men are just like this, men are impulsive, men will always be following the dopamine and the chemistry. It's not true. It is true in his reality, and I'm sure it's true for a lot of the men he knows, and it is true for a lot of men. I'm not saying that at all. All I'm saying is if you're looking for a relationship, you want to be looking at both your and your man's relationship to dopamine. And the number one way you can look for that is how impulsive he is. Another way to look for this simple standard is um, his words match his actions consistently. If a guy says, hey, I'm going to call you and then doesn't, even that is a sign that he's impulsive because he said in the moment something that he didn't actually mean. So if his words match with his actions consistently, big standard to look for, big green flag that you want to be looking for. Any kind of impulsiveness, big problem, demonstrates the level of maturity and demonstrates he's still in a phase of his life where chemistry is very much driving him or still has wounds where chemistry very much drives him, which ultimately is going to lead to him being depressed, sad and lonely, but also him not being a good partner for you right now. To be themselves. Um, you gotta understand most guys are putting up. Um, the next thing, they want to feel safe to be themselves. Um, you gotta understand most Yes, this is important. Most guys are putting on an act of being masculine. They want a girl where they can finally relax and be themselves around them, right? By the way, um, I'm just letting you know, if you guys want to learn more- so This is an ad for his course, so I'm just gonna fast forward this. I like how good is the branding though? He even puts the ads, his own ads in the middle of the videos. Almost like you're being coached by, by Father Alex himself, okay? So go check it out in the description down below or else something bad is going to happen to the channel. So yeah, um, they want to feel safe, right? And a lot of the times, guys get a girlfriend to almost replicate the relationship they had with their mothers. That's why you even notice when he's in, in your arms, he'll act like a kid, right? He'll like scratch me in my fucking back. Like shit that his parents did when he was a kid you'll notice that he'll want you to do with him, right? So they just want to feel connected. They want to relive the years they had of unconditional love with their parents. And so when they find a girl who they like, they want to find a way to relive those years. Yeah, and, and it goes back to what I was saying before, which is we often want to recreate the relationship we have with our parents. The question you've got to look at is, is that a healthy relationship? Is it codependent, is it avoidant, or is it actually becoming a secure space? But we are certainly attracted to the people who represent our parents, the emotional needs profile, both met and unmet, that we see in our parents. This is why, this by, by the way, being with a good person may not be quite as exciting because if you imagine, instead of your nervous system going, this is everything I ever wanted, oh my God, Right? You're actually more uncomfortable initially because you have to expose those wounds and rather than the person just coming in and ticking that exact wound, you're like training the person to understand your wounds and to meet those needs for you. It's kind of weird, but often those relationships are a lot healthier because it means you can set boundaries and it means you can fully express yourself. Whereas when the chemistry and the dopamine is so high, it's very scary to do that because you're so worried about the person leaving, just like your mum or your dad did. Uh, four, they want to trust you. Every, most guys don't trust women. What? Yeah, th there's a bit of a theme in this video. I really like the safety. I love that point. It's so important. Men absolutely do value safety. And trust is kind of along the same lines. Men really do value trust more than sex. And men definitely need it from you and with you. Uh, what this video goes back to, even with power and control, points one, three, and four, it, it really reflects back to basic human needs. 
So the video is things men need more than sex. Well, men need their basic needs more than sex. I mean, you could argue men need oxygen and carbohydrates more than sex, right? But in terms of the emotional spectrum, power, control, safety, security, uh, a sense of freedom and independence is one Alex hasn't mentioned that men definitely need. We all have these needs and they're very important just for us as humans to survive. So safety and trust, absolutely very important for men. 100% agree with Alex here. A lot of women think that, oh, I just want to feel safe with him. Men don't need safety. Yes, they do. He needs emotional safety. And this is why, to be honest, a lot of my clients or women who come to me who are very hardcore, very driven, very high performing women, they struggle to make men feel safe and they don't get chosen. They think, oh, I'm the CEO or I'm the super doctor. Why surely he's going to go for me, but the guy picks a, a nurse or a, a childcare worker instead. Uh, and it's not because he's judging her as more or less successful in you. It's that he feels safer with you. A lot of those women, a lot of you who are in high performing positions, you've had to get there by being very self-critical, by being very performance driven, by being very hard on yourself. And when you're hard on yourself, you'll also be hard on the people around you because you've had to judge yourself to reach those heights of performance. But if that judgment comes across to men, they don't feel accepted and they don't feel safe. And they'll choose, a man will always choose a woman that he feels safe with and as Alex says, feels trusted with. Why? Because they've been hurt. But that does not mean they, that does not mean they don't want to trust you. They want to find a woman who they trust. They want to find a woman who they can feel comfortable with, who they can feel comfortable expression, expressing their emotions, right? Because when you're single, you have your friends, but that's it, right? You want to have the opposite sex, somebody who is intimate with you, where you can express yourself with. And somebody who you could trust in general, to be honest with you. Somebody who you can live your life. That's when a guy's starting to get really mature. And the last thing is that they... Yep, I really like all of that. Really agree with it. Great points. They want to feel a sense of purpose. In fact... Yes, 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 yes. Huge. Massive. Important. Especially for men. Purpose. In fact, I think a sense of purpose is what every human secretly wants. And that sense of purpose could come in... I would agree with that and I would go so far as to say it's even more important for men only because biologically speaking, you as a woman, whether you feel it or not, society always says, hey, when you're young, you can bear children. So there is an inherent purposefulness in women, like it or not, it's just biology. Whereas men, what's, what's the point of you? Why are you here? Why are you taking up tribal resources? We what, what's the point? Men need to work harder to have a purpose, to have a reason to be here. And this is why men under 25 very rarely want to commit to women because they haven't established themselves in society yet. It's like, what's your purpose of being here? Can you really support a family? Why are you around? It's also, this is going to go dark for a second, but it's also why men commit suicide much more frequently than women. Because I really believe that, that men have an inherent sort of genetic tag in them that says, hey, if you're not creating a purpose or if you're not serving a purpose, you need to either fix that or take yourself out of the gene pool. And if we really want to help men with their mental health, we've got to give them purpose. We've got to encourage them to have purpose. We've got to encourage them to grab purpose. You need to help them find purpose because it is impossible for a guy to commit to you or feel purposeful with you if he doesn't have some kind of purpose for his DNA to grab onto for his tribal self-worth to grab onto. Purpose is extremely important to men. Many different forms. It can come in the form of wanting a family. It can come in the form of wanting to achieve a certain goal. It can come in the form of wanting to discover something, to contribute, or, or, having, or, having, or having activities that they do that they put their emotions. It could be writing for them. It could be reading. It could be painting. It could be playing sports. They want to find a way to fill their time with something that's meaningful. And this type of person is a man on his purpose. And this type of guy is a little difficult to control because they will put you above. Yes, yes. They will put their purpose above you. Yes. And you're going to find that almost like you're going to be a little jealous at the fact that you cannot beat his purpose, right? But these are the five. Yes, yes, yes. Very good. And I'll be honest with you, if a guy doesn't have this, you're going to get turned off. If a guy doesn't have a sense of purpose, as much as it might frustrate you, it will turn you off. 100,000% true. Absolutely. Because it's his independence. It's his independence that makes you like him more. 
It's his independence that makes you interested in him more. Uh, I wouldn't even say it's just independence. It's the fact that he has something that holds him stable and steady. It gives you a sense of trust in a man when he has purpose because you can see him on that purpose. Like, let's say a man, his purpose is to be the best football player in the world or in the country. And, and you just know, and he's unshakable in that. You just, you can't knock him off his purpose. No matter what mood you're in, no matter what you say to him, he is unshakable in that purpose. You may get a bit frustrated by it. You may not like it. But deep down, it turns you on. Because you know that if he's not going to bend for his purpose, he's not going to bend for you. Which means he's going to be safe. Which means if he says something, he means it. Which means that he can follow up on things and not be shaken by the tremors of life. When you see a man with solid purpose, it gives you trust in him because you know that you can't shake him and that life can't shake him. So ultimately it's a turn on, even though it's frustrating, it's ultimately a turn on deep down because it means you can trust him. Um, and when he doesn't have a sense of purpose, they'll just become needy, they'll be all up on you. You'll be the one that has to push him away rather than you having to chase him. I don't know if you want that, to be honest with you, that's up to you. But those are the five things that I believe that men want um, outside of more than sex, in my opinion. Um, it's just that sex is such a predominant emotion that they think they want sex more, but in reality, the more... Yeah, and sex, I wouldn't even call sex an emotion. Sex is a way to meet needs. It's like a tool. It's like a big, obvious tool that a man can use to meet his needs. And it's right in front of his face all the time. It's so easy to grab. It's so driven by dopamine, so it's there to focus on. It's such a... It's, it's like when you're playing a video game and you find like the, the boss at the end and you get, all the, you get all the things. It's like, that's the thing that I want because it just ticks so many boxes for men. Or they'll do it, they'll notice it's not as satisfying as they imagine. It is satisfying, okay? And he's talking about the diminishing returns there. You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> It definitely is, right? But it doesn't have that long lasting satisfaction that having a sense of purpose produces. All right. Yeah, or even having something you've worked for in general produces. When you have to struggle for something, when you have to struggle for a business, when you have to struggle for a relationship, when you have to struggle to get your fitness back, when you have to struggle for money, when you have to struggle for something, it's typically a lot more fulfilling than a short term dopamine boost will be. Hi, ladies and gentlemen, this is Alex, your toxic dating coach. I'm going to every city in the United States, goddammit. Every single city that's big, that's not Denver or fucking other cities. If you're in a big city, most likely I'm going to see you purchase the tickets right now before they sell out or else, okay? So you can go to Alex's seminar. I think that it's in a few cities. There's a link in the description. New York, a couple in Texas. There's some... He's not coming to Vegas, which is disappointing, but he is going around if you want to go to his seminars and meet him. And then I'm pretty sure the rest of this video is actually just advertisements. Ooh, yeah, most of the I rest come, of this video is comes with a 30 day. Okay, so overall, Alex, great video. I really, really like the second half of it. I think Alex's branding is fantastic. He's funny, he's cool to watch. The point about purpose is so, so on point. And what he talks about in the rest of this video is fundamentally the fact that there are needs underneath that sex meets. Some of the big ones that you can meet through sex or through being with him is safety, is trust, is security, is power. Ones Alex didn't talk about, freedom, validation, uh, affection. All of these things are ultimately emotional needs for men, even though most men won't recognize them and sex is like the big go-to where they can meet a lot of those needs. The second point about chemistry is the only one I disagree with and I think overall that's gonna be, if you're looking for relationship, you really wanna look at both your and your man's relationship to dopamine because Ultimately, if someone is just fishing for chemistry, they're not in a space. Either they haven't healed their wounds yet or they just want to distract from their problems and they're not going to be in a space where they can build a relationship because they're going to be far too impulsive and chasing the dopamine. Um, great video, Alex. Thanks for allowing me to review it. I appreciate you. And if you ever want to jump on the channel with me, let me know. Free stuff in the description. Leave a comment with your thoughts. And if you do want me to review another of Alex's videos, let me know which one.